The mission of our lab is to try to unravel those secrets of how dinosaurs actually worked. The Whitmer Lab has been here at Ohio University since 1995. We would run these things through a CAT scanner at our local hospital so we could peer inside, through the bone, figure out what was going on. There's been one project that we've been looking at over a long period of time is how these animals dealt with the heat in their heads, and particularly with their brain. It turns out that that these animals potentially could have been subject to, to heat stroke. The idea is that the blood in the core would heat up with their big bodies, and then that hot blood would rush to their brain and potentially kind of fry their brain. And maybe it's not a big brain, but it's their brain. So for most of us, um, when we breathe in through our nose, goes in through our nose and then down into our throat and then into our lungs, very simple. So if it were something like this dinosaur here, Euoplocephalus, we would expect the air to come into the nose and then just go down to the throat. It turns out that when we did the CT scans, we found something very different. The nasal cavity does all of these twists and turns, sort of what we, we liken to a child's crazy straw. One of my former doctoral students did a fantastic study modeling the airflow. The problem with extinct animals, of course, is they're extinct, so they're not, they can't even do things as simple as breathe for you. I actually took the nose and I input it into um, some engineering programs that actually let me simulate the movement of air. But we could go a step further. Now we could actually push air through it at a temperature and see how much of that heat is actually transferred from the nose to the air. Ultimate finding, it was really good at cooling down the underlying blood vessels that were giving that heat to the air in the first place. The nose became this radiator where you could really dump heat from the body into the air and have it cool down on its way back to the brain. So you have this very efficient brain cooling mechanism. Which actually protected their brain, allowing them to function in the high temperatures that were, were taking place during the, the last part of the Cretaceous when these animals lived. It's been really exciting for me to do this research and learn about these, these sort of hidden traits of dinosaurs, uh, ways to get at these animals that lived and died millions and millions of years ago. And so from a personal standpoint as a scientist, it's very gratifying to be able to sort of unravel some of these mysteries.